Would you like to introduce sure. yourself to start? Um, well, my name is Crystal Borup, and uh, I've been teaching yoga for about 10 years and practicing for around 20. Um, I am very happy that the sun is shining today. I live out in the Tetons, and we have had quite the winter, so no snow right now, and it's sunny, so I'm pretty happy. Um, yeah, yeah, so I don't, you know, I don't know how much you want to know about me, but I'm sure we'll dive in a little bit today. Yeah, so tell me about your company, Soulful Living. How did that, how did that start? I know a lot of people think about these ideas. They say, this is something I want to do. And you took that extra step, right? So like going from this idea to maybe it's something I want to do to actually doing it. How um, did you get to that well, point? Well, gosh, let's see if I can make it a shorter story than it is, but really um, it kind of began when I switched gears from owning a yoga studio, which was during, during the pandemic. So a lot mm. of people had this, a similar experience to me, um, especially I was living in Washington mm. at the time. And so Washington's rules were pretty strict, similar to California's. And uh, we had to close our studio, yeah. take everyone virtual, reopen all those things. So I made this shift to, um, to mm. let go of the studio. I actually gifted it to someone else or sold it, however you want to interpret that. And I decided to go out and venture on my own and just focus on retreats and my online mm. offerings. But the soulful living piece came in when I realized that I was a different yoga teacher than most of the other yoga teachers that I had experienced with. Um, I've dabbled in the energy healing mm -hmm. world for about 20 years as well, became a Reiki master several years ago. And energetically, I just started to realize that in my classes, I just held this deeper space for healing or connecting with, well, ultimately with your soul. So that's kind of how it came to be. And yeah. I was less interested in the physical practice of yoga and more interested in the deeper healing, energetic um, aspects of yoga. So, so that, that's kind of how Soulful Living wow. came to be. And that's been my focus ever since, really just offering deeper experiences than a typical yoga class. And it's not like you can't get there in Shavasana, but everyone teaches you know, different. So we're not all the same. And yeah, so anyway, so that's kind of how soulful living came to be. How what does it feel like now? I mean, that's a that's a big jump from a physical yoga studio to now basically an online presence. And then you have so many events and then your beautiful festival that's coming up. What's that been oh my like gosh, for you? It's that been crazy. It's been you know, one transition after yeah. another and learning to really trust and, and not just trust, but yeah. let go of the way you thought things were going to be maybe. And that story and that idea <clears throat> for so long. And, um, and because I've been willing to do that, my husband and I set out and traveled for a while and I just kept listening until I was directed into this direction and I'm still open to things evolving um, but that's kind of just, it's been crazy. <laughs> it's settled down a little bit. But... Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember your first yoga class? What that was like? Yes. It, it was like? 24 years ago. I was, I think I was, uh, 19 and is that right? Yeah. About 19. Mm -hmm. So I took it, uh, I took a course, um, mm -hmm. at a, at college and, I honestly could not take yoga serious at that time. I didn't quite understand it. And I was giggling in poses with my girlfriend. And I thought it was weird that we were in downward <laughs> dog and there were people behind us. And anyway, so I had a really hard time with my very first class or few classes. And then I kind of paused it for a little while and picked it back up when I was about 25. Hmm. And what prompted um, that return? You know, I really just think I was, I started at a gym, like so many people do. And I really just think I was looking for uh, a deeper experience so that inward time to be inward. And I think when you're young and it's not normal for you, or maybe you didn't, weren't taught that, that um, so many of us are kind of 
seeking that without realizing it. So I just started going to classes at the gym and then I became hooked af after that. I, I was reading on your website a, a little bit about your family, and it was very interesting because you came from a Mormon family. And so how does your family sort of view what you're doing now? Are they, do they understand? Are they excited? Are they, do they take yoga <laughs> um, with you? They don't take yoga with me. Um, everyone in my family is different. And, you know, I like to say I was semi, semi-religious. My dad wasn't Mormon, you know, during my childhood. And so... I kind of was always the black sheep of the family, always doing my own thing and eventually gave myself permission to step away. But, um, you know, everyone's very supportive. I, I'm pretty lucky that way. Um, you know, I mean, sure, I've, I've gotten the comments over the years about not being Mormon anymore, but for the most part, yes. And, mm -hmm. but yeah, no one really does yoga with me. My dad's tried a couple of times and, um, other than that, I'm pretty much on my own, <laughs> as far as my family goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, now you have this whole community that you've built, and you have these retreats, and then you have the festival coming up as well. So are you currently living in the area still where the festival is going to be? I'm sorry, is it, it's the um, Tetons, right? Yeah, is that so how you pronounce Teton it? Yeah, so we're in Teton Valley, Idaho, and the festival is in uh, Victor, Idaho. And yes, I live just, mm. you know, like, 10 minutes from where the festival will be. And we are right on the border of Idaho mm -hmm. and Wyoming. So most people are familiar with like Jackson, mm -hmm. Wyoming or Jackson Hole. And so that's, you know, not even 30 minutes from where the festival will be. And then a little over an hour mm -hmm. from us is actually Yellowstone. So we get quite a bit of traffic through here, mostly on the Wyoming side, but um, mm -hmm. it's a pretty magical place. Mm -hmm. The festival sits in this beautiful valley, like nestled in the forest. And we have, you know, the Teton National Forest, the Targhee National Forest, and the big whole mountains that surround us. So it's, it's pretty magical. But yeah, so I live in the Tetons now. Um, and my re retreats are all over. I still do quite a few retreats back in Washington. And then I'm just kind of yeah. picking places here and there to explore. Yeah, and that was going to be my next question. Now that, you know, mm -hmm. our, our world is open again, so to speak, how do you decide where to do these retreats and these events? You could literally do them anywhere in the world. How do you narrow it down to the places that um, you end up choosing? You know, I think it just comes down to intuition and where I feel drawn. Um, and mm -hmm. then also a little bit of feedback from, uh, you know, my core following that's been going to all of my retreats. So I definitely check in with them. Um, and I, I just partnered with a, a large, um, gorgeous resort back in Washington to do quarterly retreats mm -hmm. there. So I'll be doing those regularly. And then I'm hoping to do, in, in addition to the quarterly retreats, um, at least two more retreats per mm -hmm. year. So Mexico's on the books for next winter. And then the festival is this yeah. fall, so I'm trying to decide if I can squeeze one more in or not this year. Yeah. How would you describe mm. the retreats to someone who has never done a retreat at all? Someone that says, I need, I need a break. I need to get mm -hmm. away. I need to take some time for myself. How would you um, describe a retreat well, to them? Well, I, I kind of think of my retreats um, um, as more of a wellness retreat. So it's a combination of yoga, mm -hmm. but I make the yoga... A little more suitable for all levels so it's not going to be these intense power mm -hmm. classes i might might do a more active style or a vini yoga class in the morning and then do yin or restorative you know later in the day um, i often include sound healing um, i do a lot of some of the soulful living work i call it the soul journey work is just a, light, a lot of guided meditations inquiry journaling practices just stuff to help you go deeper and sometimes they mm -hmm. include spa services, you know, things like that. So always mm -hmm. a treat. Um, and then every retreat is, is a little bit different. So you're not going to get the same thing every time. But so this is really open to someone that has never done yoga ever, but is really just interested. Absolutely. In yep. We usually do two yoga classes a day. <laughs> and then have other things. Maybe we even go hiking, but yeah, definitely self-care, you know, there's space for healing. 
Um, sometimes I'll offer energy healing work or we'll do group energy healing sessions as well every once in a while. So it just depends on, yeah. on the retreat and uh, the partnering, the retreats I do in Washington where I partner, it's a little bit different. I don't bring in the energy work as much, although for those who are sensitive, you'll feel it. Um, but then, mm. you know, but then on my personal retreats, I definitely include that a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, mm. I love any kind of retreat quite honestly. And, and I find that I also get very emotional sometimes, you know, and in a, in a good way, you know, and it's such an opportunity to, to take a step back and take, kind of take stock of your life, you know, which I feel like a lot of people are doing in general in this landscape we're in now. Um, but do you find that too, that people get very, very <laughs> emotional and very, um, I, yeah, I guess absolutely. I think work. yoga in itself, the physical practice can bring up things, you know, we, we store so much in our physical bodies that we're not even conscious of. And so when we're moving our bodies or, you know, doing big hip openers or heart openers, it can often bring things up. And then when you combined you know, the guided inquiry where we're getting more clear on what it is that we want for ourselves, that in itself can bring up a lot of things. So um, it's natural, you know, it's a normal process. And I don't want anyone to be scared of that. But it's good to feel our emotions. Yeah. And it's good to be present with what's what's here. And sometimes we need that break from life yeah. to be able to be with it, or to see it. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you, when you're going through your personal, I mean, especially in the last couple of years where there was a lot of transition and a lot of movement and change, when things feel a little um, more challenging than normal, what's the first step that you'll take? Mm -hmm. Is there a person? Is there a practice? What's the first thing that you'll do when you see, okay, I need to, <laughs> things are getting a little hairy right what? now. What, <laughs> that still happens? No, I'm kidding. Of course it does. Right. Does it ever not happen? <laughs> Um, you know, I have a lot of tools yeah. up my sleeve. Um, one thing I've turned to mm -hmm. a lot in the past couple of years is nature. So nature just helps mm. me be grounded, helps me be more present, more conscious. So nature has been a mm. big avenue for me. Um, I've actually struggled a little bit mm. this winter with the amount of snow and the lack of sunshine that we've had here, where, you know, my husband's out skiing yeah. and living his best life this winter but for me it's different so when i don't um want to turn to nature then just to my yoga mat to my breath practice um i have my own support system too i think it's important to have you know our own mm -hmm. guides or coaches or whatever and so i always i always have you know my support if i need it as well yeah and oh. I, I live in New York City. So for me, nature, yeah, so for me, nature is a little bit of a walk, but even sometimes just getting outside of my apartment and walking is, is helpful, you know, and just stopping that that flow of constant information that tends to overwhelm my brain. Um, but I do find that, yeah, if, if I can get outside or if I can get to a park, um, it does, it definitely does. I assumed you were in everything. California. Well, that's fun. No, no. Oh, I okay. did live in California for many years, but I've, I've actually okay. born and raised in New York City. So it does feel like a lot of noise mm -hmm. all the time. It's a constant, you know, state mm -hmm. of very high energy. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so breaks and retreats are always very Well, we welcome. probably <laughs> live like polar opposite lives other than we're into yoga. Just, yeah. I mean, I look around <laughs> and there's like not even a car driving by or we're all out here on a couple right. of acres and right. view of the mountains and but but it's so interesting but we're still yeah. both you know similar people you know we still have our struggles and we still have our challenges and even if you're in a beautiful you know mountain area or if you're in a bustling city you know still how can we quiet how can we find that yeah that calm we're, that we're all still seeking? human Yep. And we're all still yeah. working and working towards something or striving yeah. or, you know, all that. What's coming up in the future for you? So you have this big transition from physical yoga studio to now this, you know, wellness business with these retreats and these events coming up. 
do you see something else coming in the future, like another evolution, or are you kind of staying yeah, where you are I'm for not a little sure. While? That's actually something I've been exploring. Um, the the Teton Yoga Festival is taking up a lot of my time this year, just doing the foundational work. Um, mm -hmm. But I do feel like something is emerging, but I don't know when that will be. So stay tuned yeah. but for now you know retreats i i do have an yeah. online community that's really sweet we do a lot of group work um online and but other than that i don't know we'll yeah. see how it goes just <laughs> yeah and, and it's true festivals do take a lot of energy and is it the first time you're it's hosting it in, in that area? oh wow and it's a very it's a special retreat you have a lot of really interesting offerings yeah the retreat, festivals um it's a little bit unique. So a lot of festivals tend to have just a million yeah. offerings. And, um, you know, one thing that we learned when we did a lot of research before deciding to, you know, it, it was a go for the festival. Um, what, the one thing that people kept yeah. telling us was, you know, we go to a festival and it feels like we're missing out. We don't have any downtime. We're just constantly going, going, going. And we wanted it to be, we wanted enough offerings where people felt like it was a festival, mm -hmm. but some time where they can be in community mm -hmm. to slow down, to have meals together. Mm -hmm. So we're just structuring in like community mealtime yeah. breaks and offering wellness services and things like mm -hmm. that. So as far as a festival goes, there will be a lot of offerings, but we're trying to make it more intimate, like a retreat or a large retreat. Mm -hmm. um, and it's at a beautiful ranch and they're just nestled up in the forest. So it's, yes. it's stunning. So I, I'm excited about it. It's going to be great. When I saw the photos that you sent, I, I wasn't familiar with the area and, and you sent some <laughs> photos along and I was like, my jaw dropped when I saw the photos. I was like, this is absolutely beautiful. It was so stunning, the location. I mean, even if you just want to take a little break and go take a beautiful weekend. I would yeah, like I mean, it festivals. should definitely be on your bucket list to come out to the Tetons. And if, you know, if any, for anyone who's buying a ticket and traveling, I highly recommend staying a little bit longer. It's just, it's beautiful. My parents came out for the first time this last winter or this winter, kind of early in the winter, we took them out uh, near Yellowstone and my dad was almost in tears because it was just so beautiful. And he lives in Washington, which is also beautiful, but just to see him see another area that he had never been to was yeah. kind of magical, so. Oh, I love that. That must have been so beautiful to you, for you to experience it was, with and your dad. The one unique thing that yeah. we have here is we have wildlife. So we'll often see mm -hmm. a moose, or if you go on the Jackson side, we'll see bison sometimes, we'll see elk. Every once in a while, a bear, mm -hmm. it happens, but <laughs> we see foxes, you know, so it's just fun and you yeah. just learn how to be and how to experience and respect wildlife, but so. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Is there anything else oh my you'd gosh. like to share? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I feel like we covered quite a bit. I'm just, yeah. you know, super thrilled to be featured as a teacher on your magazine and I'm just kind of looking forward to whatever the future has to bring. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much for supporting us. And you are on our teachers page with your offerings and all everything you offer that you've mentioned, obviously other than the retreats and the festival mm -hmm. are is available online. So anyone can access it. Her information is on our teachers page on our website. Um, so check it out. You know, there's no, you can be anywhere in the world I, and access. I think that on your website, we so, listed, a, you know, maybe some discounts yeah. or a coupon code or something. So that's something to maybe bring attention to. Yes, everyone loves a discount. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Crystal. I'm so excited about all the stuff you have going on and your beautiful festival, which I hope I can make it up there. It's around my birthday, so I'm not sure. Oh, it's my yay. big 50. So I'm like going Good away. <laughs> but we'll see. But hopefully next year if I can't make it this year. So thank you so much for joining us today. I will save this and I will upload it to YouTube as well. So if anyone was working or couldn't make it today, Sounds they can good. catch it later. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank